Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 5th of October and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 8th of October. But before we get on to that and the return of Chinese markets, I think it's important to look back at the events of the last few days because I think we've had a choppy week for equity markets on both sides of the Atlantic. We've seen the Dow make fresh new record highs. Um, but by contrast, we've also seen the S&P and the Russell 2000 underperform, particularly the Russell 2000, which has really accelerated moves lower over the course of the past couple of weeks. And this divergence, I think, in US equity markets, not only in US equity markets, but also, I think, in European markets, is, I think, making things a little bit um, confusing for where the overall market direction is headed to. Certainly if we look at the DAX we can see that the downtrend that's been in place since the June highs remains firmly intact. Concerns about European politics, particularly I think Brexit talks, that's not a, that is not a binary outcome between the UK and the EU, but also the deterioration in the rhetoric between Italian politicians and the EU um, I think is weighing on risk sentiment in the euro area and that's before we even start talking about um, the uh, breakdown in talks between China and the United States over trade with the um, latest chip story unlikely to make things any better. So um, looking, looking ahead to the next week or so I think the big story of the week has been the rise in the US dollar but also um, the rise in US Treasury yields. Um, now, earlier this week, I wrote a piece on US, US uh, tenure on the brink. And certainly, I think the breakout that we've seen earlier, um, earlier this week, um, above the highs that we saw in May and to the highest levels since 2011, has got an awful lot of people speculating that we could be on the cusp of a big move higher in the two and in, in the US 10 year yields and a big sell off in the US 10 year treasury. Now, um, while I think there are concerns that inflation may be um, may well be coming in higher than people had expected, I think one of the drivers behind this move higher in yields was comments earlier this week by Jay Powell, chairman of the Fed, where he did a little bit of a reverse ferret on his comments at the FOMC press conference a week before. In particular, his remarks that we're a long way from neutral have raised the prospect that rates could go quite a bit higher in the next few months, particularly since he went on to state that interest rates were still accommodative, even if they aren't extremely accommodative. Now, obviously, that's got an awful lot of people speculating about the pace of future US rate rises, and I think it's made a December rate rise that much more likely. More importantly, I think what it's done is it's made markets consider very seriously the prospect that we could see three or four rate rises next year as well. And I think that's caught an awful lot of people the wrong side. And I think that more than anything is what's caused this big sell-off in US Treasuries. But we are on the cusp of a very, very key level on the US 10-year. It's between 3.2% and 3.25%. Um, and that's where the 200-month moving average is. And you can read my comment. You can read my commentary piece on the news and analysis section in the carousel section of the website. Just scroll across, and you can find it to listen to my thoughts or talk, read about my thoughts on the particular topic in question. More importantly, we've seen a bit of a break higher in the dollar index, but it's not been totally conclusive. If we look at this chart here, we can see what I would call a counter-attack candle. So we had a very strong move higher on the Wednesday. We opened quite significantly higher on the Thursday and closed pretty much back um, where the previous close was the previous day. That is called a counter-attack candle and that suggests to me that maybe, just maybe, this recent run higher in the dollar may start to run into a bit of steam. But of course all of this is caveated by the fact that I'm recording this video just prior to the non-farm payrolls report and that could change the picture completely. We've had some really decent economic data this week out of the US. If wages data this afternoon, later this afternoon and the payrolls report later this afternoon 
comes in particularly hawkish then we could have another crack higher in the US dollar but we could also see further pressure exerted um, in higher US yields. Now given the fact that we've already risen quite sharply from 306% already this week and are currently sitting at 32 you have to question whether or not a slightly higher wages number isn't already priced in. So I think you've got to, got to bear that in mind. I'm recording this video blind it could be completely out of date by the time you listen to it on Saturday or Sunday. So looking ahead to the upcoming week, I know I've used about five minutes of this video already, we've got the latest UK, it is quite UK centric next week, obviously the Brexit talks are likely to hang over the market, um, there's still an awful lot of concern that there may be no deal on the Irish border. Um, uh, and at the moment that does appear to be weighing on sentiment a little bit. Having said that, the pound is looking fairly well supported, so I think there's an awful lot of positivity seeing the economic data this week. But ultimately, while both sides are basically indulging in a staring contest, ultimately uh, they will come to an accommodation. And I certainly think that's what the markets are pricing in. We can certainly see that in the context of this cable chart. Posted a fairly positive uh, daily candle. Um, on the Thursday of this week which might suggest that we could well have another move higher. We're still broadly in this uptrend from the lows in August and until such times as we take out 128.50 I'm not overly concerned that um, we're going to start to fall off a cliff. Euro dollar slightly more problematic. We did break below 115. Found support around about 114.60 could well find a little bit of support down here but ultimately even if we do break lower I don't see us breaking much below 113 in the short to medium term. So looking ahead we've got UK GDP and UK trade and that's out on the 10th of October which is on the Wednesday. Now last last you know last week's September this week's September PMI numbers have showed that the UK economy I think ended the quarter on a positive note. Manufacturing was at a four month high after a slowdown in August and I think the monthly GDP number should show an economic expansion of 0.3 helped by that rebound in manufacturing. We've also got manufacturing and industrial production data for August on the Thursday and again the PMI data has shown that manufacturing activity slowed sharply in August so that, that could well be a disappointing number. Exports were a particularly weak area. Now this could have been just a summer holiday induced slowdown as a result of maintenance shutdowns in key areas um, and probably won't be shown in next month's numbers. So I think unless nonetheless July I think was a decent month and I think a, a rebound in September could actually offset that but we won't know that for at least another four or five weeks. We've also got China trade um, and I think the big question here when China's Chinese markets return from their golden week holiday is whether the further implementation of US tariffs last month could have significant effects on the Chinese surplus which was at a record level in, uh, in, in September, oh, sorry August. So I think judging by recent US data in the other direction, the imposition of 10% tariffs appears to have made little difference. Having said that, these will be the first numbers that could be affected by the $200 billion of tariffs that kicked in towards the end of last month. And I think that's going to be a key area in the context of how Chinese exports do relative to imports. We've also got US CPI for September. That's going to be particularly prescient given the big jumps that we've seen in prices paid um, in the recent ISM surveys. Um, as, as I pointed out in my, earlier on in the video, um, Fed Chief Jay Powell was at pains to admit that US policymakers weren't seeing much evidence of inflationary pressures at the FOMC press conference. He went, he deviated from that slightly earlier this week. So I don't think it's immediately clear what Fed policymakers' views are with respect to inflation. Certainly the move higher in oil prices is going to have an effect and it's certainly going to have an effect on emerging markets in the days and weeks ahead, particularly if we move to $90 a barrel. Emerging market currencies still remain under enormous amount of pressure India in particular, Indian rupees made record lows as have a number of other currencies 
um, in emerging markets. The Indonesian rupiah, for example, has gone back to levels last seen in the Asian financial crisis. And the Turkish lira also still remains under pressure. And we've also got the Chinese yuan, which is back at 6.9. So the emerging market story still remains a story, particularly if the oil price continues to move higher, which I, st I think that there's a good chance that we could well head towards $90 a barrel. So certainly over the course of the next few days and the next uh, few weeks, the oil price story is going to be a factor, the yield story is going to be a factor, and the emerging market story is going to be a factor. There's a lot to get your teeth into, but hopefully... Um, we'll be able to get the direction right or the general direction right. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Hewson signing off from CMC Markets.